We are now excited to be joined by Lindsey Crosby, writer for AuburnDaily.com and host of the Locked On MLB Prospects podcast, talking Auburn baseball's game tonight against the Jacksonville State Gamecocks, a midweek game at Plainsman Park. Lindsey, you noted in your recap of Auburn's series win over Texas A&M over at AuburnDaily.com that this game is a stop on the Atlanta Braves World Champions Trophy Tour, and the 2021 World Series Trophy will be available for photo opportunities and celebrations and i gotta ask is blooper the atlanta braves mascot gonna be there because if so i need to pull up so i have not gotten confirmation that blooper is coming now blooper has traveled a lot recently so i am hoping he's there i am a fan of blooper either way come out to the josh donaldson hitting lab get your photo with the trophy uh and then stick around for what should be a great matchup against the gamecocks well, let's go ahead and get into it. Auburn baseball, 17-7 and seven on the season so far, 3-3 three and three in the SEC, taking on Jack State, 11-11, and 6-0 and oh in the A-Sun. Let's just go ahead and start here. It's a midweek game for the Tigers. They're 5-0 and oh in midweek games this season. What do we know about the Gamecocks? So this, this Gamecocks team is one that they've won seven of their last eight. So the record is not great on its face, but if you look at – recent production they're definitely feeling good they just swept north alabama last weekend and offensively you know they're hitting about 250 as a team so there it's not something where you can just look past this midweek and be thinking about lsu on thursday friday saturday you have to actually pay attention tj reeves the junior outfielder he's bad 372 he's their biggest threat leads and hits leads and runs leads in rbis leads in stolen bases but uh a team you have to respect offensively when you are, you know, an Auburn team looking to to get right before you go to LSU. Obviously, that LSU series uh, looming large here starting Thursday. Uh, Auburn taking on the number 13 Tigers. The prob- probable starter for this matchup, Auburn Jack State, uh, senior Jordan Armstrong is going to be taking on Jake Peppers, the sophomore for the Gamecocks. Uh, how do we feel about Jordan Armstrong in this matchup, Lindsay? So Jordan Armstrong started the year off really hot, and then he stumbled a bit, and it all came down to his mechanics. He he has a really unique arm slot, and from that arm slot, his changeup, which is the best changeup on the uh, on the entire pitching staff, plays really well and disguises off his fa- off his fastball. He struggled a bit um, with that slot. They had to take him out of the rotation, fix some stuff. He appeared over the weekend. He looked fantastic. I really think that we're back to the Jordan Armstrong that we saw to start the season. Uh, and we, we're going to give him a good, easy way to get back into starting, uh, facing a Jacksonville State team that should give up some early runs to Auburn and should give him a nice lead to work with so he doesn't feel like he has zero margin for error. For anyone that does not know, Auburn currently has the nation's on-base percentage leader, and you, Lindsay, have a phenomenal nickname for him. Tell us about Sonny DeShera and what he's done for the Auburn Tigers this season. Boy, let me tell you about our thick king, Sonny DeShera. Yeah, uh, 609 on-base percentage leads the entire country. Uh, He's batting 452, which is seventh in the country, fourth in slugging at 935. So his OPS, 1544, absolutely absurd. He has played 20 games on the season, uh, has seven home runs on the year. And the biggest thing to me, he played 20 games. He's been walked 22 times. Wow. Uh, And, you know, probably a third of those are intentional. And so despite having a lineup, they can put up a ton of runs. I mean, Auburn averages somewhere around eight and a half runs a game or so. Uh, you still have a guy in the heart of the lineup that you are intentionally walking because every time he comes up to bat, he just crushes the ball and collects RBIs. And what's great is the fr- the front part of that lineup. A uh, leadoff hitter, Blake Rambush, has a 14-game hitting streak right now. is batting 450 during this, a bunch of multi-hit games. Uh, I believe it's 13. And so every time Sonny Deschar is coming up to bat, Uh, you have an opportunity to collect RBIs. I mean, he's collected 21 RBIs on the year, again, in 20 games. And so a guy that you absolutely have to be cognizant of at all times and be ready to to defend because he can hit anything you throw at him. Um, Combine that with the energy that he brings, not only to the team, but to the fans. His walk-up song of the Italian wedding song has quickly become a classic. And I think you can say that Thick King Sadi Dachara is the people's champ of Auburn right now. 
Yeah, our uh, our thick king is is raking uh, right now for the Tigers. And, and quite honestly, Lindsay, I mean, you look up and down the schedule so far. Auburn's had some games where they've put a lot of runs on the board. You know, last season the struggle for the Tigers was picking up wins in close games. Auburn currently three and three in uh, one run games this season, I believe. But all these runs Auburn's putting on the board is that because of the strength of schedule that Auburn's playing? Maybe it's a little bit weaker, or are the are these batters really starting to figure things out? I honestly think it's the batters figuring things out. So you you look at some of the guys that they've brought in. They've brought in three big transfers to start this year. Blake Rambush, Sonny Dachara, and Brooks Carlson. And all three of these guys have offensively delivered whenever they've been in the lineup. And then you've seen a lot of key growth uh, from from players who didn't have as big of a role last year. Catcher Ryan Dial, uh, freshman Mike Bellow in the outfield. You're seeing this, this, this offense just take on an extra dimension. And it's something that I was worried about. When you look at the amount of talent that they lost graduating or being drafted off of last year's team in a short King Ryan Bliss and a Tyler Miller and a Rankin Woolley. But some of these additions have really stepped up and, and lengthened this lineup and given Auburn's offense a chance to stay in every single game. One more question here for you, Lindsay, and we'll let you get out of here. Consistent mm-hmm. pitching was an issue for the Tigers last season. What have we seen out of the bullpen this year, and what can we expect out of the Tigers' rotation coming tonight? Obviously, like you mentioned, a huge series against LSU coming up. Will the Tigers limit themselves in this game? So I I expect to see, after Jordan Armstrong's done, I expect to see either one guy, and you try to throw him the bulk of the innings, or you take a lot of pitchers and you throw them one inning at a time. And the idea there is, is get everybody in a little bit of work. You don't have to do a bullpen if you go out and throw tonight, uh, but you obviously want to keep guys safe. Uh, one of the guys I expect to see pitch tonight out of the bullpen is Joseph Gonzalez. He's been a starter for Auburn for quite a while. He started as a freshman last year, and he's missed the last two weekend series with a, an under fingernail blister on his middle finger of his throwing hand. Uh, he reported that it, it was pressing his fingernail up off the, off the bed. Mm. A lot of pain there. He could play catch, but he couldn't grip a baseball well enough to throw. And um, reportedly, he is feeling well enough to attempt to pitch tonight. So they're going to have him come out of the bullpen a little bit later, probably to relieve Jordan Armstrong. And if he pitches well, I expect to see him back in the starting rotation this Saturday. And so you would have a Hayden Mullins, Trace Bright, uh, Joseph Gonzalez rotation this weekend for LSU. Lindsay, thank you so much for coming on the show. Tell everybody where they can find your great content. So I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. You can follow all of my writing uh, at Auburn Daily. And if you want to listen to a podcast about minor league baseball, I've got you taken care of at Locked on MLB Prospects, available wherever you get your podcast. Absolutely fantastic work Lindsay does over at AuburnDaily.com, covering the Auburn baseball team and then his podcast, Locked on MLB Prospects, is absolutely phenomenal as well. Lindsay, thanks again.